let's create a new method called start game and this will hold everything that we need for our game so public void start game and now we say key event from JavaFX scene input key event and this is where the magic happens I will copy the code and then I will explain it line by line uh, so you get the full clarification the code is actually fairly simple but it just takes some tricks so let's see the code okay so as you can see there are a lot of variables here that are red so I'll go to them and I will explain you what is happening first this variable called first so we need to know because we're using a key event so each time the user presses a key this method gets called and now we need to know if it is the first time that they have started the game or is the game already started so we just use a simple first variable which takes values one or zero and if it's one it means that the user started the game and if it's zero it means the user is already playing and if it's one we need to do this thing and i'll explain it in a moment but let's first create our first variable go here and it's private int first and first time it's one and then later we change it to zero so this thing only gets called once let me add a comment only gets called once and now you're probably wondering what is this so basically this executor is an object which we can use in java to do specific tasks periodically this is a task that we run this is the initial delay and this is the period and we use time seconds time unit seconds so each second each second one second if you put this to two it will get called each two seconds but if it's one it gets called each second run this piece of code and it is red because we need to create that object and we'll create it here so this has nothing to do with JavaFX. This is pure Java code. So as you can see, it's actually called schedule executor service. And here it just takes one thread. Okay, so now that we have a task that we want to do each second, um, let's actually create that task. So it, it, it's called R because I called my runnable interface object R as you can see here basically this is a thread in java this is how you run threads in java there are multiple ways but i find this really simple and intuitive so we created an runnable object r and we want to run it each second and what does it have to do each second well each second in our run method if the timer is bigger than minus one we need to update the seconds on the screen so basically this thing acts like a timer and then just update the timer to minus one and timer is just a private int which is equal to 60 seconds private int timer equal to 60 seconds if you set this to five the game will last five seconds but we want our game to be 60 seconds and as you can see here it just updates the time on the screen each second this gets called it updates the time on the screen and then what happens when we run out of 60 seconds so when our timer is bigger than minus one we do this but what happens when it is equal to minus one so we got to zero we decrease it to minus one and then we want to do this block Remember when I said that after 60 seconds, we need to write our data inside here. Well, this is the place where we do it. So if the timer is equal to minus one, we say user word set disable to true and set text to game over. So basically 
what we say is let me open this in scene builder after 60 seconds we want to disable this and in, in here it will say game over and each second will update this on the screen so this piece of code does that and then we want to write data to our file remember that we stored our file in a um, variable called save data and now we create a new file writer which will write in this file save data and save data is this file and then we write our statistics we currently don't have statistics statistics i will implement them later but in here we write data inside and then if the timer is minus four because the timer keeps going it doesn't stop our timer doesn't stop when it's less than zero so it goes to minus one minus two minus three and when we get to minus four we just set play again to visible again so this whole time play again was invisible and disabled and now we set it to visible set it to disable and we ex we shut down the executor because we don't want to run these tasks anymore we can but there's no point because the game is over and then um, after this we just update our timer again to minus one just like in here so it keeps going in here it's minus one then it's minus two and when it is minus four if you put this to 10 then you have to wait 10 seconds for play again to be, be visible so let's put it to four and that's basically it so our executor runs this thread which just updates the text on the screen and then after 60 seconds it writes the data into the file okay so this was the timer and file writing and here is the game logic so if key event which we called ke again this method gets called each time the user presses a button so a b c d enter escape whatever and we only have to run this code once but this gets called each time as you can see here each time we press enter because when the user is pressing the buttons or typing the word we don't actually care what he's typing but once he presses the enter we want to check if the word he has entered is the same as the displayed word and that's why we use this so key e get code equals key code enter you can actually put this to anything you want but enter is kind of the standard and then when the user does that we take user word as you can see here we take the real world or the program word we increase count all so basically what what count all is is each time the user presses enter we want to inc increment this we don't care if it is correct or if it is incorrect we want to count the number of times he pressed enter so basically what count all is it's just a private int count all and it is equal to zero at first so this is the first bit of our statistics if our string as you can see here s is equal to the real string we want to increase the counter so we say private int counter is also equal to zero and if it's correct so if correct we increase the counter and then we say words per minute set text string value of counter so words per minute is actually our let me show it here open in scene builder words per minute is actually this so we want to increase that by one and then we start the new thread which basically uh, just displays this correct as you can see they are invisible and when we run this thread it will become visible and then invisible again and let me show you what i mean so let me paste it over here this thread gets called when the user enters a correct word and basically what it does 
it says the opacity of correct and correct is our image if you go up here correct is our image so this image over here we want to set the opacity to zero and then we want we, we say thread sleep 200 milliseconds then we set the opacity to 50 and we say again thread sleep 200 seconds and then we set the opacity to 100 then sleep 200 seconds and then we set the opacity to zero basically this is just an animation it will go from zero to 50 to 100 and to zero and it will it will blink on the screen as you will see later and we also have a fade wrong animation which is basically the same animation but it does it with wrong image so we have two images as you can see here check and wrong this one gets called when it's correct word and this one when it's wrong word and they will just blink on the screen so it's something i thought of uh, you don't have to do it this way you can do it any way you want there are actually javafx animations but these are these are really really simple so now if it's correct we update our statistics and we say okay let's blink the correct image and if it's wrong let's blink the wrong image and then after all of this has happened we set the user word to empty we because we want to delete this text box so this is user word we want to delete this text box so we say to empty we update our accuracy which is basically counter so all our correct words divided by all of the words so if you have 50 correct words and 100 over all words your accuracy is 50 percent and then we multiply it by 100 so we get the percentage and we say it here and then we say okay program word is set text words get word counter remember here when i said and explained uh, the variable word word counter so at first we initialize it to first word and the second word and update this so it displays second word and the third word and now we want to do the same thing basically we say okay take the current word take the next word and update it again so each time the user presses enter these two will shift by one so our second word will become the first word and the first word becomes will become some random word and that is basically it and when we go up here now the things that we write in our file is count all so all of the words correct words and um, incorrect words which is basically of all the words subtract the count the correct words and that's pretty much it and we divide them by semicolon so later when we want to display some data we can use split by semicolon and get all three numbers in java and we only have one final step to do but let's run the program and see that it actually works so the only thing that we have to do is these all display zero but if we have some files we currently don't in our data we currently don't but after we play this game we will have some data we need to update this and that's the last step but let's click play and as you can see it says 60 seconds old and identifier are our words and when i start typing as you can see the game works So I let the timer run out. As you can see, we have five words per minute. We have 100% accuracy. In here, it says game over and we can click play again. But uh, one important detail that what I want you to see is that we created a file, as you can see here. And now when we go to data and our file, we can see that we have five words in total and five correct and zero incorrect. And this is the sub step which we have done here. And the final step is to load this data in our main controller 
So remember when I said we need to display data and we have to do that now. In order to load the data, I've created a simple file handling class, which has two methods. The first, which returns the last modified file in a directory. And the second that sums up all the numbers from all the files in the directory. If you go in here, you can see that we have some numbers. And if we have a hundred of those files, we need to sum them all up so we can display them on the screen. And basically what this file does is we have a directory, which we pass in here, and that directory is data. And we get all the files from that directory. And then for each file, we take that, we read the file, we split it with semicolon, as you can see here. So we get five, five and zero. And then we save that into an array. So this will be total, this will be correct, and this will be incorrect. And we sum them all up for all the files. And then at the end, we just return our array. And this counter is just a number of files. So for each file, we increment the counter. So we have four digits in our array. And now when we go to the controller, and when we need to display the data, this is now a very simple task, as you will see. Okay, so we call file handling sum up numbers, and we pass our data in here, it will sum up all the files. So even if there is 1000 files, it will sum up the numbers. And then we say, okay, so total is string value of data, zero words per minute is we take the first element, which counts the correct words, times data three, which is total number of files. So let's say that we have 100 correct words and that we have five files. We basically say, okay, so why 100 divided by five files? And we get, we get correct words per minute and invalid is uh, saved in the second place as you can see here. So data three is number of files and data one is correct words per minute. And that is it, our program now works and let's demonstrate it. So let's click run. And as you can see, it actually loads our data from this file. And now when we click play and play the whole game, And when we click play again, it takes us to main screen as I can, and as you can see, our data is updated. So we have total entered words 72, average words per minute is 35, and invalid words is two. And if we refresh our data, you can see actually two files in here. And that is it, your program now works, your Java type practice program works, and you can practice typing in here and become a better programmer. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel to support our work and I will see you in the next video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. See ya!